What's going on guys, Teen Mechanic here. I thought on this beautiful Sunday when it's actually close to 15 degrees, finally it's it's nice, I thought that I should bring you at least a quick tour of this car. Uh, I know that I have it featured once on my channel. Um, it's just, just about, uh, you know, I was trying to get it started in almost minus 40 uh, degree weather Celsius, that is. And uh, I, uh, I didn't really go, you know, in depth with it, um, but I thought now that it's this nice, I think I should just show it to you because, I mean, there's actually not a skating rink right here. It's, uh, it's finally nice. I can actually drive this thing from the back to the front here. So I'll go ahead and get right into it here. Um, this car by far has been like my absolute favorite car that I've ever owned. Um, at first it was the uh, 1997 Ford Crown Victoria. <laughs> But uh, you know what, this thing takes the cake <laughs> over that 97 Crown Vic with 300,000 kilometers on it. Now this isn't just any other ordinary uh, Cadillac Eldorado. This is, um, as evidently put right there, it's a Cadillac El Clasico, which means that it had an El Clasico package back in the day. There was some extra chrome, the vinyl trunk lid. Uh, and if you Google a 1973 Cadillac El Clasico, uh, you'll find some weird stuff because there isn't actually an exact definition as to what an El Clasico is. Because uh, if you look online, there'll be strange pictures of ones that have giant circles right there with pluses through them and a crazy chrome front. It's just incredible. I, I, I'm not a huge fan of them. But like this, this is an El Clasico. It has an El Clasico package. If you also, if you also noticed on the back, it has the uh, Jim Pattison logo on it, um, which I believe the story goes that this car was allegedly owned by Jim Pattison. Now, I don't have the whole, uh, the whole full story on Jim Pattison uh, or who he is or what he did. Um, Google has lots of information on Jim Pattison. Uh, I don't know the full story, so I can't really go in depth. But from my understanding, it, ha it was sold at his dealer and he owned this one personally. Um, in a bag of parts that I have somewhere, this, uh, there's a, an emblem that has a P on it instead of the Cadillac wreath and crest. Uh, and it, it's, it's actually pretty cool. Uh, I might put it back on for the uh, whole Jim Pattison thing. But anyway, with other than that, I mean, uh, it, it, it's, it is a Cadillac Eldorado, same platform and all that. And uh, to prove it here, I mean, it's got the same thing as all the other Eldorados right there. Interior by Fleetwood, body by Fisher. That was actually the case with a lot of Cadillacs uh, from not only this era, but uh, even the 80s. Um, they were, a lot of them had the, the interior by Fleetwood, body by Fisher. I mean, that's, that's just something that these, uh, these Cadillacs, I mean, even just GMs in general, a lot of the, uh, I think even Oldsmobile, um, they, um, th that's just kind of a staple. Like ev everybody knows about the uh, body by Fisher kind of stuff. But I can tell you, Fisher sure did a great job <laughs> designing this thing. I mean, it, uh, this, this thing is a work of art, simply put. I, I adore this thing. I just, I, I can't, I can't get enough of it. The, the, just when I look at it, like there is something to be said for these fend like these fenders, these curves, these it, it's like a sculpture. It's like someone is running their fingers over some clay and just ending it so elegantly. I I can't I can't describe it. I, but it's it's beautiful. I mean these 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 gold Cadillac crests. I like it's beautiful. Now it's even beautiful in this state. Now what I mean by that is this car is not even close not even close to perfect. I mean, it's in good shape, but it's not like, it's not, the body has some spots and I won't point them all out to you cause it kind of ruins it. I mean, it doesn't ruin it, but you notice it, but I'm gonna show you the most obvious here. You can see the paint change. Um, that's because there's actually a uh, shroud that used to go on it and it's in the trunk. I'll show it to you. Uh, we'll get to the interior in a second, but, uh, trunk poppers back there if we go ahead and open this trunk there's a car cover in here it's actually quite a mess but like look at this trunk this is outstanding if you see the shag carpeting and 
just the upholstery in here that's covering it. It's just all beautiful. And if you look, this here is the shroud. It used to be, this was part of the El Clasico thing to have that chrome shroud. So it's kind of a shame there, but um, this, uh, this doesn't have that motor that closes it. Cause normally here, like you would let it down to here and it would shut it for you. But uh, it doesn't in this case, because I don't know if it was deleted or if it never had it, but uh, that's an unfortunate thing with that. I should mention here, this and this and this fin, um, which is actually an antenna, but a lot of people call it a fin. It uh, it is a um, it's not for a car phone. I know that's what most people uh, most people's guess is. It's a car phone. Uh, it's not. It, it's not for that. Uh, actually, if you open the trunk, there's a cable running through there, and that is because this thing had a television in it. Yeah, a factory television, not aftermarket. It was new, f from new in 1973. This thing had a little, like, 8, 10 inch uh, uh, sharp TV, black and white, that would sit right in between the back seats there. So you'd have to crane your neck to the back, but it was still really cool because, I mean, you would see in there, I mean, it's just, it's just beautiful. It would sit right in between those seats. Now, these windows are also different for the El Clasico. There's me in the reflection. But uh, these uh, windows were also different because uh, if you notice, I mean, they're elegant. And uh, most of the El Dorados just had square windows and there was nothing much. But a lot of them also had uh, little lights here. Uh, and this one doesn't have lights. But, I mean, it is what it is on that case. I mean, this, this car, I, I don't really have any complaints about it, even as is. Anyway, this vinyl top here, does it has seen some better days. Uh, it's still got some nice padding to it. It's very hot, very clean, but uh, you can see in certain spots like this, it has, uh, it has obviously the classic rust underneath the vinyl top. I mean, if you look over there at my Monaco, it has the same thing over there too, except with that case, it's actually completely gone and peeled off, but I mean, it had some pretty, pretty bad rust under it. But yeah, I mean, it's just, it's just, it's bad. This is peeling back too, but I mean, this, I think this would cost anywhere from five to eight thousand dollars to get this vinyl, this on the door, and the stuff on the trunk completely peeled off and re reupholstered, and the bodywork. Um, this here has some duct tape on it. It's separating from this chrome band here, unfortunately. So uh, it actually kind of reminds me of the Crown Victoria a little bit, uh, like the 50s Crown Vicks that had the uh, hovering, uh, or not the, the halo. Uh, it was like a crown. Um, that's why they called it the Crown Victoria. But other than that, I mean, this car is just beautiful. Um, I've already, I've said that probably six times now, but uh, maybe even more than that. But it's, it's just extraordinary. Um, and I don't have any complaints about the styling of it. Like, I seriously don't. Like, there's not one thing you could say, well, pick something you don't like on it. I, I, I can't. I can't pick something I don't like. Like, there's nothing. I, you specifically like how certain things wouldn't line up, whatever. But the styling of it, like, there's nothing I could pick that I don't like. So we'll go ahead and move on to the interior now. I'll go ahead and open this up. This, uh, this is just, I mean, this door is the heaviest door I've ever seen. It really does take some, uh, some muscle, some shoulder muscle to shut that door. Uh, all the Eldorados had these here, these little uh, plastic wood caps there. These actually fell off, so there was some blue felt on it, uh, so I, I, I put these back on. But uh, this panel, is, or this door, probably weighs 100 pounds uh, minimum. It's just incredibly heavy of all that actual metal, wood, leather, glass. Like the shag carpeting, like a lot of Cadillacs had that. But we'll go ahead and climb inside here and take a look in here. Now it smells, it smells like an old luxury car. It smells like a Cadillac. I can't exactly describe the smell, but it's just like, I, I, I love it. I'm in euphoria when I see this car. Um, and I just, uh, I love it. But we'll look at some of the features it had for its uh, era here. And the wipers, obviously. That uh, that changed, I think it was either 74 or 75. This is a 73. But it's changed, I think it changed in 75 when they uh, changed up the body a little bit. This thing has square headlights. I've had a lot of people uh, that say that they think it's a 70. They think, oh, it's no, that thing's like a 75 or 76. Trust me, guys. I know my cars. This is a 73 Cadillac L Classico Eldorado. 
and uh, the reason it has the square headlights is because the previous owner, uh, or no, it actually came with the El Clasico package, uh, and the because uh, typical Eldorados came with circ circular headlights. But this one has the square one, and it is part of the El Clasico package. But everything in this car is just beautiful. The headlight controls are just just beautiful auto dimming i'm not exactly sure how to use all of that stuff but it's pretty cool and if you look on this side i mean you've got uh you've got your climate control which all works by the way the heat works well the ac is uh, not really but um you've got your off vent which is for green air low auto high by level and defrost now by level i think is either defrost and floor or vent and floor i really am not sure i also love this cruise control switch here an analog light switch to turn on your cruise control it is it looks like they went to home depot and put in a light switch to control the cruise control you also have your cruise control here i believe this turns it on and this sets it um, but this comes off the turn signal stock it's just i mean that's how it was this actually has a tilting steering wheel too which is nice uh the horn the horn doesn't work in this car which really is terrible but it's i mean this horn just it sounded so crazy uh, i'll see if i can put in a uh, sound effect um right now so yeah the horn in this car was just outstanding like i mean that, that this this thing had uh, what four or five horns highs and lows and mediums it was just it sounded like a cruise ship it was just outstanding like i can't stress that enough but i mean it's it's really cool this gear shift of course the needle doesn't quite line up properly in the gauge cluster here but i mean it's uh, it's fine this radio obviously is aftermarket it has a power antenna which goes up and down if you turn the radio on or turn it off it goes up and down you have your RT, which is, um, I don't know what R is, but uh, T, I assume. It's not 8-track, it's not cassette. I mean, it's it's you push that if you want to listen to a tape. This is ejecting the tape if you push them in together. This is, of course, fast-forwarding. Everyone knows how to use a cassette player. You have APC, don't know what that does. You have FM, obviously, and LD, which is loud. That uh, makes the speakers louder. That was a common feature back there. You've got scan through the stations. You've got presets, one, two, three, four, five. You've got the clock, blah, blah, blah. Not sure what that does. Not sure what that does. I can't tell you. I sound like I don't know what I'm doing and um, you're kind of right. Obviously this here is the um, bass and treble control. Or no, this here it changes the station and uh, this is um, of course the tone and bass and treble. You have your antenna switch here, which is the up and down. And unfortunately that doesn't work. I couldn't tell you why. Um, I don't know why it doesn't work, but as you can see here, you have rear defog, which is, uh, which is really cool. It was considered a very crazy feature to have it on that car. So, um, not very crazy, but pretty cool to have it on that car. And, uh, I mean, this one had it, of course. This here is the sunroof. Now, if you see the outside, it's actually, no, it's, uh, it's just, it looks like a hard top and like there's no sunroof there. I mean, it's kind of camouflaged. You see the line, but you don't know what it is. Well, that's this here. It's not a glass sunroof. You push that button and it opens. I'm not going to open in this video, unfortunately, because the motor is very tired and I just don't want it to get stuck open. It seems like that's something it would love to do. But anyway, we'll go ahead and look down here. I mean, you've got, of course, you've got an ashtray for each door except for the driver. The driver gets the best ashtray there is. You get the beautiful one that has a slide out under the dash and the passenger gets his own little one in the door. I mean, but he still has one. There's actually... Um, Theoretically, you have an ashtray for almost every passenger in this car. It's um, a four-seater normally, but of course you can fold this up and sit uh, five people. Um, normally there would be a bench in the back, but that right there, we'll move on to the back seat in a second. Um, that, there's a pretty cool story with that. But here's the dash here. Of course, you've got all your HVAC controls, but that clock there was a digital clock because most Eldorados didn't have that kind of digital font clock. It was uh, an actual analog clock with uh, the dials or with the um, arms. Looking down here at the pedals, you can see it actually looks like a floor mounted pedal. Um, but if you look uh, at it, it actually lifts up. Uh, so it's not floor mounted, but it uh, it's still pretty cool. I like the look of it and the brake pedal. I mean, they're just all rubber and aluminum and metal i don't know if that's aluminum but i think i assume it is but there's just so many cool things in this car as you can see seventy-five thousand five hundred and forty-eight miles on the car um and that is original it's not rolled over or anything like that but just comparing 70s cars like sitting in this car compared to sitting in that car 
like this this thing feels like ecstasy and that feels like I I can't but say driving this car it puts you in this kind of euphoria and it's absolutely true it's just the best feeling thing in the world and it's not a fair comparison now that comparison this here I mean you can see there's two vents there on the driver's side two vents there in the middle and two vents on the passenger side that thing has two vents in the middle and that's it that's all you get uh, and the, I mean, there's one on the floor and some defrost, but that's it. I mean, this this dash pad isn't all cracked and destroyed, and I don't know, it's just beautiful. But now we'll go ahead and move on to the owner's manual and stuff like that. Yes, that's right. This car has an owner's manual. This here is Cadillac Eldorado. Blah blah blah. This has an index. It looks like it's a an owner's manual uh, or some kind of uh, diagram repair manual. I have no idea what that does, but this here, 1973 Cadillac owner's manual. That right there is something really cool to have. It even looks like leather, leather on the front, it's textured, but um, it's just really, really cool to have. I mean, it's just something that you don't see very often. And I mean, this, it's just, it's just beautiful. It tells you what every little thing does. That right there would have been the uh, original radio there. If you can kind of see it, that's what it would have looked like. Um, which doesn't have a cassette player, obviously, but this one does. I mean, this one was aftermarket. But that's a really, really cool thing to have. And you also have this here, which is a repair guide for a Cadillac from 1967 to 84. Um, at US and can and Canadian models so that's that's just really really cool to have and it's it, it just tells you everything about it that looks like a some kind of that actually is an Eldorado by the looks of it right there an Eldorado hardtop I think that pretty much does it for the front this has already been a pretty long video um, I should mention though down there that right there's a trash can in the corner yep Yep, that's a trash can. You could slide it out that way and dump it, and that is where you put your trash. That is just super cool. Unfortunately, that light is hanging down. I gotta resecure that, but that's just beautiful. I mean, I just, I love it. All right, guys, I'm sitting in the back seat here, and I'll go ahead and put this seat right back. Um, as you can see, I mean, these are individual seats. They go back and forth. That thing is just one bench. Um, but this, this, I mean, this is just super cool. Of course, you have your ashtray, which is beautiful, and it's extraordinary. There's your gilded cigarette lighter. <laughs> I don't know. And you just have such beautiful lights back here. I mean, the, the, the Valor, Velour, I don't know how to pronounce it. I don't know, but it's... Like, it's just so beautiful. Like, like the, the, the leather and the, the seats. It's beautiful. Now we'll go ahead and move on to this story here though. When we bought it, this thing used to be a fridge. Not down here, it would come up to about here and it would be a fridge. Yeah, this thing in 1973 had a fridge like a Ford Flex. Absolutely crazy and awesome. You would open the fridge, I don't think it worked, but there was it, it all looked like this pattern here. It was just, beautiful you'd open it it would like i don't think it worked but it was so cool back here there's a little compartment because the fridge had to be taken out unfortunately i would i would have liked to leave the fridge in here but uh unfortunately uh, the guy had tried to take it out and it fell apart in his hands but right back here is where the tv went if you're wondering why there's no gaping hole there it's because the upholstery uh, guy made uh made uh some material or or fixed the hole with the material from the fridge and uh, now there's no hole there, but that's right where the TV would have gone, right between the seats, and that's just really cool. And if you look right there, there are aftermarket Clarion speakers in this car. They sound pretty darn good. This here, I'm not sure why this comes out or what it is, but it's there and it's cool and it's staying. That right there is something that looks out the front windshield to see, uh, I don't remember, to see if, uh, I think that's, uh, it's either, uh, auto dimming or um, like for the headlights or something like that um, but it, it's really really cool like uh, the, that's an early depiction right there I forget exactly what it does but it, it sees the brightness of oncoming cars but it's really nice back here overall I mean it's just the, the, it's just so 
grand and excellent and beautiful and I love it and I have no complaints and I would daily drive this thing in a heartbeat. All right, I'm on this side now and uh, as you can see, which is really cool is this rear door handle, which I really love. If we go ahead and fold this seat forward here, you can see there's this gigantic door handle for this gigantic door for the rear passengers. That is really, really cool to have. So I gotta climb out of this back seat. It's not particularly large. I'm only five foot nine and my head is touching the ceiling. Uh, and it is uh, it is pretty cramped back there, but that's, uh, that's kind of to be expected for a, a coupe like this, a little tiny, little sporty coupe that's 18 and a half feet long. Anyway, guys, I think you've all been waiting for it. It's time to fire this thing up. My fa oh, I, get, I think I might even go as far as to say it's my favorite part of the car, and that is the engine. I can't say it's my favorite part of the car because, you know, I like it. And every time I think of the biggest production V8 in history, I kind of laugh. I mean, this, obviously, I know that Mopar had exper experimented with you know, like 574s and whatever, 572 or whatever it was, and like, and they had those in Monaco's, but I mean, this, this is huge. This is like, and when I think of, like this here is a production V8. This was produced in a car. When, like, you'd have to, you'd, you'd have a hard time finding a 570 blank in a, in a Dodge Monaco, but this car, every Eldorado from 1970, uh, 19, what, 60, 67 to 1973 or 4 had this 8.2 liter 500 cubic inch GM 501 V8 and it is just incredible. I mean it's it's loud, it stinks and it's slow, but it's awesome. Like I, it, there's just a certain feeling you get sailing down the highway at 100 million kilometers an hour and it's just it's cruising like I don't know it's just it's really cool it feels like a lead sled like there's no stopping it but anyway taking a look around the engine bay uh, I it I did repaint it and refinish it um, because it was pretty darn nasty I have a before picture that I can put on screen right now so uh, it was pretty bad um, but now it's it's pretty clean now and I, I like it I, I didn't quite finish everything but uh, it has a parasitic drain unfortunately so the battery goes ba uh, dead uh, after I don't know, like 15 minutes or so it's done. But if it had a new battery, it would be dead dead in a week. Um, so, I mean, it's got a pretty bad draw. I think it's probably 7 amps. Uh, I think that's what it was, 7 amps. So it's it's really bad. Um, but I can, I can probably get to the bottom of it, I'm sure. Anyway, uh, enough looking under here. We'll go ahead and fire it up right now. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and get that charger and uh, try and fire it up because I guarantee it's not going to start right now. Alrighty, guys, we'll go ahead and fire this beautiful, gigantic monstrosity of a car up. What you should do is actually push it down about halfway and then go ahead and fire it up. It has a bit of a tap sometimes. The oil's got to be changed in this thing, but look at this thing. Beautiful. It has a bit of a tap, as I'm sure you can hear, uh, and I'm not sure why that is. Uh, it's kind of concerning. Like sometimes when it's cold, it just tap, 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 tap. Uh, it's, I don't know if it's a push rod or if it's an actual rod or who knows. I don't. It doesn't sound like a rod knock, um, but on the off chance that it is, I mean, I don't know. I can't. I can't have this engine go. You know. That, I mean, that would just be so bad. But. It has a little tap. Um, I'm sure an oil change might fix it. The oil is black, so uh, it, it. But you know, I mean, it's it's a beautiful car. And uh, listen to it. It's just beautiful. Like it's a beautiful, beautiful sound. But now I think what we'll do is take it on a quick drive uh, to the back and uh, 
we'll just see. We'll just see how awesome it is to drive. That's why I'm not talking and I'm just stuck in amazement. Anyway, I think that's got to be about it for now. But uh, anyway, if you enjoyed the video, thanks for watching. I'll do the outro in a second. Anyway, guys, outro it is. Thank you very much for watching. And actually, I recorded that video uh, a couple days ago prior to receiving that, um, that shout out from Auto Auction Rebuilds. Thank you again to him and to all of you guys for uh, actually taking the time to come over to my channel and subscribe. I really appreciate it more than you know. Uh, but anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, I personally think I wasn't actually going to upload it, uh, but I've had a lot of people tell me more Cadillac, more Cadillac. They want to see the Cadillac and uh, I wasn't going to upload it. I wasn't speaking very well. I was tired. I mean, I was just kind of, I threw the video together. It was almost 20 minutes long or over 20 minutes long. Uh, so I wasn't going to edit it or upload it, um, but I decided, hey, what the heck, may as well throw it out there. Um, but anyway, share this video with someone who you think might really enjoy it. Um, and uh, give it a like if you enjoyed it. If you didn't, give it a dislike. Uh, but let me know in the comment section below how I can improve. And also in the comment section below, let me know what you want to see. Seriously, it's important. I want to take advantage or I want you to take advantage of that comment section below because I have a couple interesting ideas with certain cards around here and uh, I really want to know what you guys want to see if you have any feedback please let me know or have any ideas about what you want to see again let me know but other than that guys thank you very much for watching um, and by the way it's maybe worth mentioning I opened a patreon account I, I've never done that kind of thing before uh, I don't know uh, exactly how it all works so it's very bad I posted something on the Monaco uh, and you can actually see my shadow holding up the phone it's uh, it's kind of it's 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 interesting it's not a very uh, great account but I open one nonetheless if you want to see some crazy things around here that require quite a bit of funding um, like I, I don't have any um, I'm not I, I, in the about me section, I, I'm not asking for any money. I'm just telling you what I'm about, basically. Uh, but anyway, aside from that, if you want to go check it out, you can. Link is in the, on the channel banner there. And uh, also, I uh, should be in the description below. But anyway, I've been talking too much. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye. This car is just incredible. Now, it's... Holy shit.